Hello, this is the first video on adding vectors together and we're going to have a look at a technique called the tip to tail rule which you may or may not have heard of. It's very similar to the parallelogram rule. Um, the reason we're going to use the tip to tail rule rather than the parallelogram rule is it's slightly simpler and it's the one that the exam board recommend. If you want to have a look at the parallelogram rule there are lots and lots of things online so just have a search for parallelogram rule and you can find out. So tip to tail rule and adding vectors. Okay so in previous work at GCSE or whatever, what we've been looking at is, is the resultant vector and we know how to calculate a resultant vector. So for example, if you've got a, an object here that is acted on by two different vectors, uh, let's draw them in here. We've got vector A over here, say, which is, let's say, six newtons. And we've got vector B over here, which we'll say is 10 newtons. Now obviously they're acting in different directions, so if we use the convention that rightwards is positive, we can say that this vector here is minus 6 newtons. And so when we find the resultant, we find the sum of the two vectors, but it's the vector sum, which means that it's the sum taking into account their directions. So if we're looking for the resultant vector of A and B, which we'll call R, that's going to be the sum of 10, so plus, because it's the sum, but now minus 6. So 10 plus minus 6 is going to give us 4 newtons. And the sign, the positive sign tells us that that resultant vector is acting to the right. Okay, so that's the situation um, that we know at the moment. But let's consider a second situation over here. We've got a different object being acted on by another two vectors. But this time, we've got vectors acting in this sort of direction over here. So let's say we've got vector A, which is pointing downwards vector B which is pointing in that kind of direction over there. Now it's a, it's a more complicated situation here because they're not acting parallel or anti-parallel. These two are obviously opposite to each other and so we can just um, add them up. Here because they're acting at angles we need a different method and the method we're looking at here is the tip to tail rule. So I'm going to switch to using um, arrows for my vectors here, pre-drawn arrows for on this software and also I'm going to just get rid of this bit here. Let me finish with that. Okay, so here's a vector, um, just any old vector. It's got a magnitude and it's got a direction. Now the vector there is the same as the vector there. I haven't changed the vector at all. I've just changed its uh, point of application, which is act it's acting from here, obviously, and now over here is acting from over there. But the vector is the same vector, which is the point. So you can translate vectors, move them around wherever you like. As long as you don't change the length of the arrow or the direction that it points in, it's the same vector. So let's have a look at this situation here where we've got um, a vector B, let's say, which is that vector there. And we have a second vector which points down the way like that. Okay, so there are two vectors. They're both acting on this object here from this point and we want to find their resultant. So the way to do that is to use this green um, rule here. What we do is we take the vectors, I'm going to move both of them because they're on top of this diagram but actually usually you only have to redraw one of them. So that's vector B and that's vector A. And what we can do is, what, or what we do do, is we place the tail of this arrow onto the tip of the other one. Okay, so this is vector A, this is vector B. The tip is obviously the pointy end and the tail is the other end. So what I've done, if you can see there, is I've placed the tail of vector A onto the tip of vector B and that is the point of the tip to tail rule. Okay, and that's all you do. And then we go on to this blue sentence here, the vector that starts at the tail of the first and ends at the tip of the second is, a res is the resultant vector of the two original vectors. So in order to find the resultant, we just draw a third arrow, which I'm going to do as a dotted arrow, just so it's clear. But obviously, when you were drawing it, you just maybe use a double-headed arrow or something for the resultant. From there to there. So effectively, from where you've started to where you've finished. And that is the resultant vector of the two. And in order to find out what that is, you would measure it. You would measure its direction and its size or its magnitude, and that will give you the vector in its entirety. And that's it. That's how you use the tip to tail rule to find uh, a resultant vector.
Now, a lot of people say, well, it doesn't matter which way around you've done it because you've actually done B first and then A. Well, let's have a look. We'll put the resultant over there. Um, we'll now do it the other way around. We'll put the tail of B on the tip of A like that. And when we try and find the result in those two, we find that it's exactly the same. So thereby meaning it doesn't matter which way around you do it. And in fact, um, um, adding up or, or addition is, is actually commutative. So you can, even in, with vectors, it doesn't matter which way you put the, which vector you put first, it still works. Okay, so that's tip tail rule. So let's have a look at a typical question. Okay, so, so over here we've got um, two vectors acting on this object in the middle here, whatever it is. We've got a vector of 12 newtons, which is acting upwards and to the right, and a vector of 18 newtons acting upwards and to the left. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw them to scale, because it's really important that you draw them to scale, because the lengths represent the magnitudes. So we've got to convert this vector, this number of newtons, into a specific number of centimetres. Now the first thing to do is to look at how much space you've got, because obviously you've got to fit the vectors into the space available. And quite often in, in the exam paper, you'll have a piece of graph paper written down on the exam, or actually printed on the exam paper that you can use. And obviously you have to fit the thing into that. So I reckon here... Um, if we use 12 newtons is equal to 6 centimetres, which means 2 newtons is equal to 1 centimetre, which it means that 1 newton is equal to half a centimetre. And it's wise to write your scale down in the corner so that you know where you are and everybody else knows where you are. So 1 newton is equal to 0.5 centimetres. So then we... Uh, we know what the lengths are because they're written down here, but we don't know the uh, direction. So I'm going to use this little fancy uh, interactive protractor here to find, try and find out what the actual um, angles are, what the directions that these vectors are, are working, are acting in. So this one here is around about 41 degrees, and the one over here measured. Whoop, let's just get that out of the way measured from the same reference point which is really important you must always measure your angles from the same reference direction in this case the positive x-axis if you imagine a pair of axes on here so this vector's angle here is 163 degrees so we've got two vectors one acting at 41 degrees and that's the 12 newton one and one acting at 163 degrees which is the 18 newton one okay so we can now use our protractor down here and if you were doing it yourself on a piece of paper you would obviously need the protractor to do that but I've got these fancy angles that have come off there. So I'm going to start right down at the bottom here because I know that it's going to go up 12 this way, 6 centimetres and then along by 9 centimetres this way so you've got to kind of plan out where you're going to draw it. So that's there and then we can put our ruler up against here and we can draw a vector which is going to be 6 centimetres long. So from the point there we go up this way 6 centimetres Oops, that's a dotted line. Um, never mind, I'm going to draw my vectors in dotted lines and my resultant as a solid line in this case. So that's the first vector. And then because we're using the tip to tail rule, we measure our second angle at the tip of the first vector. So we put our protractor angle there and we measure 163. And in that specific direction, we measure um, the 18 Newton vector, which is going to be 9 centimeters long in our scale. So just line the ruler up like that, um, and then we draw another arrow, which goes from there, right there, nine centimeters all the way over to there. That's good enough. Okay. So those are our two vectors, tip to tail, and we can now get rid of all our protractions and all our angles and, and just look at the two vectors. So there we are. So we started here, we've done tip to tail there, and we've finished up here. So then we find the resultant vector by going from where we started to where we finished. And that is our resultant vector there. And I'm actually going to label it R. OK, there we go. And now all that's left to do is to measure the direction and the angle. So we can bring our protractor down here and pop it as close as we can there. And then the angle here is approximately 121 degrees. And then we just need to measure the length, the length of the vector. So we line our ruler up like this. And the length of that vector there from beginning to end is approximately 7.8 centimetres. 
So then we would convert up this with multiply 7.8 by 2, which would be 6, 15, 15.6. So our, correct me if I'm wrong, my mental arithmetic is awful. So we're looking at 15.6 newtons and acting at an angle of 121 degrees and that fully specifies our vector and that's the resultant of our two original vectors using the tip to tail rule. If you're doing this in exam there's another couple of things you should take into account. You should always label the vectors. So we, we might call this vector A and this vector B and so we would say A, B. Um, we would put our scale in somewhere handy so that we can see what's going on and we would definitely make sure that we put arrows on all our lines and that would get you full marks in an exam question. And that's it, thank you very much.